Unless you're in the far future, you're probably living in the 21st century, and your patience is thinner than a strip of Listerine, so I'll make this quick. India and China have a disputed border and are pointing guns at each other right now. During times like this, Chinese media becomes especially hostile. Let's look at the roots of Chinese perceptions on India, starting in ancient history and coming up to modern times. Ancient history? During the first millennium CE, India and China had heavy cultural and trade links, bolstered by Buddhism. Chinese monks made tremendous journeys to come to India and translate Indian thought to Chinese. You think your international degree was hard? These guys literally fought off bandits and sharks to study in India, so you can imagine how awesome the education was. In fact, the first ever circulated print in history was the Diamond Sutra, an Indian text translated into Chinese. Having this reputation gained India the name Tianzhu, translating to something like Heavenly Center of. For those of you who don't know, China is obsessed with being the center of the world. The word for China in Chinese is Zhongguo, literally meaning Middle Kingdom. Talk about narcissism, am I right? India being a heavenly center was a big no-no for the Chinese elite. Han Yu wrote, Buddha was a man of the barbarians who did not speak the language of China and wore clothes of a different fashion. Essentially, he tried to convince Chinese people that Buddha's choice of clothes wasn't vogue enough, and in 845, Emperor Wu Zhong destroyed thousands of monasteries and temples, and presumably fashion stores. For the next thousand years, Buddhism would continue to ebb and flow within China. In summary, Chinese-Indian ancient historical relations can be characterized by Chinese philosopher Hu Shi's remark. India conquered and dominated China culturally for 20 centuries without ever having to send a single soldier across her border. We'll come back to that quote. Colonial times! In the 1700s, India went from Mughal rule to anarchy to British domination. The Chinese didn't care until 1839 when the British sold them drugs grown in India. The Chinese were like, why'd you let them do that to us, India? This was exacerbated by the fact that the British often used Indian policemen and sepoys. A Chinese novel from 1904 writes about a turban-wearing Sikh policeman in Hong Kong. Why do they not use an Indian as the chief of police, a man asks. An old man answers, who ever heard of that? Indians are people of a lost country. They are no more than slaves. Chinese intellectuals like Kang Youwei and Liang Keqiao, fathers of Chinese modernization, framed India as a worst-case scenario for Chinese civilization. To study why India sucked so much, Kang even attacked the Indian weather. Don't you know in the tropics people do not go cold and hungry, therefore people become lazy? Must be why great leader Mao Zedong caused those famines. Hungry people make obedient workers. Even formerly glorious past relations started being attacked. Remember that quote by Hu Shi about India's psychic domination of China? He actually said this in rejection, in the context that China now needs to abandon the peaceful ways of the weak Indian. This hatred of Indian weakness became so strong that when the uber-famous Nobel Prize-winning Tagore toured China to talk about Asian spirituality, Shen Yanbing said, nor do we welcome the Tagore who creates a paradise of poetry and love and leads our youth into it so that they might find comfort and intoxication in meditating. He essentially called him a big hippie. To exacerbate the negativity, much of Chinese perceptions on India in the 1900s were based on British colonial literature, which was racist and derogatory. In summary, during the colonial period, China felt betrayed by the enslavement of Indian people and sought to destroy any links with these peaceful hippies. This would culminate in the Cultural Revolution of the 1950s, where Mao Zedong had the Chinese destroy all spiritual and cultural relics. It seems like destroying temples is a recurring trend in China. <laughs> Moving on to independence, the Chinese still looked at India as a tool for Western imperialism. To the Chinese, who view their language, race, and government as so central to the nation's power, India being a chaotic mess where many leaders spoke English was perplexing to say the least. Quick, take Tibet before they become slaves too! China would go on to conquer Tibet and massacre thousands, 
while the Dalai Lama escaped to India, where he could be welcomed. China has since expanded its claims to Ladakh and calls the Dalai Lama a fugitive terrorist. This guy? In summary, the post-independence period was characterized by a continued rejection of India's diversity and a continued suspicion of India's independence. One eternity later. The perceptions of yesteryear have largely carried forth to the present day. To exacerbate, China's economic and technological success has only given them a higher pedestal from which to throw shade on India. China still views India as a potential launchpad for Western imperialism, and as a weak country whose culture and spiritualism are to be avoided like they were rotten bananas. The irony is that China viewing India as a Western client state has created a self-fulfilling prophecy. India can't take on China and Pakistan alone, and now needs Western help. This is not something that India or Indians want. There are only two ways in which India will earn the respect of the Chinese going forward. Option 1. China realizes it needs more friends against the West and decides that it wants to support India and rekindle old ties. China demilitarizes the border, supports positive views of India within its propaganda machines, stops its veto of India's growth at the UN and the Nuclear Suppliers Group, and stops weaponizing the terrorist state of Pakistan. Best friends forever, right? The realistic path is that China continues to think of India as a hippie town, India throws its resources behind the West in confrontation with China, and takes aggressive moves to gain the respect of the Chinese. As great leader Mao Zedong once poignantly said, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. I've been your host, Ashvit, and thanks for tuning in to Dharma Dhaba.